Want help to grow your business? Download Bryn, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Bryn.ai or search the App Store today. Hi, I'm Dale Beaumont and welcome to Design My Website. This episode is titled, How to Plan Out your website in 45 minutes or less. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go through uh, in under that time and explain to you all the different panels and uh, and how to basically plan out what you need for your business. Now joining me here in the studio is two leading website developers. Uh, together, their company has been responsible for building well over 4,000 websites, so they definitely know a, two, know a thing or two about website design. And uh, they're gonna be going through the steps and helping us to get prepared for designing a great website. Welcome back, guys. Thank now, you. we're into the really exciting part, which is planning out the yep. website, uh, but not to be forgotten all the other things that we've spoken about on previous uh, episodes about how to get your strategy right and around how to actually, you know, checklist of what you need to prepare. We've also spoken about how to plan out the content for your website as well and how to actually find the right website developer for your business. So assuming you've done all the preparation work, now we're ready for the next step. Now, first question is, is it really possible, Chris, to plan out a website in 45 minutes? Seems like a pretty it, ambitious goal. It's definitely it's <laughs> definitely a big challenge and you might not get all of the planning done in 45 minutes, but I think if we if you if you think about the planning the website out in in panels and in stages as we're going to explain in this episode, it will be it'll be a big help to, in terms of doing it. Okay, great. Now, um, what do we need to have ready before we actually start the, 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 this particular stage? So there is some, some prep work that we've covered on other episodes, but let's quickly summarize what you need to have done before doing this. So we, we'd make, we would assume that you've already got your branding. So that's, um, you know, the, your logos designed. Um, I think we've got a logo style sheet. Mm. Um, do we in have there that as well. Side? Yep. Um, yeah, there it is. So it's, you've got your logo, you've got your branding, you've got your colors, you've got all of that in place. You've got a good idea of who your target market is. Mm. And as we said, we've talked about that before, and there are other videos on Bryn about how to, how to do that. Um, you also want to make sure that you've planned out the pages of your website, the navigation, and, um, and the content. You know, we talked yes. about content. You know, having a good idea of what you want to say on your website, who your target market is, and, um, you know, what it is you want to convey with your website. Are you going to be selling online? You know, having a good idea of, of, of your business and what you want to do online. Mm. Okay, great. Now, I want you to explain, Chris, this idea of, uh, of sort of panels. What are we talking about and uh, why are these important now um, as opposed to, you know, five or sort of ten years ago? Because yeah. the way that we've designed websites has certainly changed. Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you look at most modern websites when you look at it today, you, yeah, like if you look at most modern websites today, you'll start seeing, you'll start looking at these different different elements of the site and they're all different. Like they're, they're, the other side, if you look at it, it's all in different blocks and they've all got, they've all got a different purpose. Um, some of the blocks are to position and say what the company's about. Um, some of the blocks are, are, are asking you to do something. There's a call to action um, or, or building credibility in terms of, uh, you know, why people should use your business. So all the different, all those different elements of the site have a different, have, have a different purpose. Uh, the reason why it's important now is 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 websites uh, being mobile responsive. They're they're in blocks, and each each and as they as it moves down, those elements keep uh, resizing to suit the the size of the screen. So if yeah, all, all sort of modern web design now is 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 based on. on these panels. And if you look at websites now, you'll actually see the different kind of like sections. Sometimes they might be a complete yeah. contrast. One could be kind of like gray and the next one's white. Yeah. Or otherwise you might see a slight uh, change in the shading between the different kind of uh, panels. Yeah. Because um, in the past you used to just have text and, and images, but they were sort of like always next to each other. But yeah. then when websites became responsive, the text would kind of disappear yeah, way down the page and the images would be completely kind of different. Yeah, so right. now what happens is each section of the website kind of like has its own brain yeah. and then it responds sort of differently yeah. um, and keeps all of the content and images attached yeah. without kind of losing positioning. Yeah, that's right, and their own specific purpose. Of what you've, what, yeah, what you've All right, now we've mapped out a whole bunch of different uh, panels. So just quickly talk about how many panels kind of are there? Are there? 
Uh, look, there could, there, there's probably around 20, um, but obviously um, each business is different, and you don't need all of the, and you don't need all of those panels for every website. Uh, so it'll depend. The panels will depend on the type of business and who your target market is and what you're and what you're trying to do. So we're going to start like at the top with say the first one. We can tell you right now is going to be your header kind yep. of uh, graphic, and then right down all the way to the footer, yep. and then in between that there's you know 20 other uh, panels, but you don't need to use all of them. In fact, you probably shouldn't use all no, of them def definitely because not. your website will be too big and yeah. sort of too cluttered. Yeah. So, um, yeah, how do people sort of choose, how many should they be looking for in terms of their business? I, I'd say on a normal website between between five and ten would be a, would be a, would be a normal amount. Uh, again, it would be depending on um, on your business and the, and what the messages that you want to convey. Uh, you want to generally try not to have too many because it starts to once you, once it, uh, you get too many, the page it will take much longer for the page to load. All right, and just give us a couple of quick examples, Tams, Tams and when we go to go through some are more specific for a location based business mm -hmm. and we case you probably want to have a map of where your store is um, or otherwise if you're selling products online you're going to have pictures of the products but if you're you're not actually selling anything online you don't need that so so just give us a couple more examples of those making those decisions um, so if you have a oh those were my two examples. <laughs> you know, so um, an online store. Um, other examples would be... Like if um, you have a team, right? You might yeah, want to have yeah. a picture for the, for the team. Yep. Yeah. I mean, another example, I mean, this would probably be relevant, um, you know, when we do it, uh, the credentials, you know, mm -hmm. having different, um, you know, associations or companies that you've either worked for or, um, or associations, people that, you know, that you are associated with that gives you credibility. So, like, lawyers might have a... If that's really important that they're accredited with the law, the law society, mm. they would have you know they would have that on the, their homepage. Whereas a cake maker wouldn't be so relevant because um, they don't need any credibility. You know they would have something more like a gallery um, as one of their panels showing their their cakes because yeah. that's their selling point. And as yeah. we go through, we're going to sort of focus on the home page of the website, which yeah. might have somewhere between, like you said, seven to kind of ten different panels. But on some of the subsequent pages, you might just need the header, maybe the footer, and then you're going to have maybe one or two panels. And a large, a large part of that is going to be your text, right? Yeah. Where you're going to put everything in. Yeah, generally um, for consistency, you have like a secondary page design, which would be your, your about us and your the, just the general informational pages. So yeah, there'd be a lot of text. Uh, there'd be sort of text about your business, uh, or you might have you might have special pages specifically for your team if you want to. You know, you might have a special uh, meet the team page that's got a you know that's got a different that might have a few different panels on that. So you we we're talking primarily about the home page, but yeah. you can have for your secondary pages um, or the internal pages of your website, you might then have another custom design. But the other thing as well, which we'll talk about, is some of the panels with this, if one of the panels is testimonials, you can have that a panel on your home page, but you can also repeat that panel on other pages of your website, yeah, perhaps right. at the bottom um, yeah. of that particular page. Yeah. And you might have a call to action, uh, you might have a call to action panel that's relevant on different pages or with a slightly different content. So you, would just re you could just reuse the panel on different pages. Okay, great. Now, um, with regards to the ordering of the panel, do we need to worry about that too much at the beginning or is it just uh, a case of you know, knowing, just pick the, the ones that you need and then you can always reorder them later on? Yeah, so I think it's I think it's important to have a bit of an idea, and if you're working with a designer, you'll go through the process and you'll kind of get an idea of what works. But with most platforms, WordPress, for example, the most with modern you know modern WordPress designs, you can move um, you can move the panels around. Um, the good the good thing about these being all little individual blocks is they can be moved around. So you might do some testing. You might have your site up for three months or two months, and you look and you go, um, it's not right. These that call to action's not quite working there. I might move it up more further up the page, or I might I might change this call to action with a different one to see if it gets a, see if it gets more take up. Yeah. So it does. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be okay. So you, you do, can always. You do change. need to check with your developer though mm. that they have that flexibility within the software that they are building right. the website because if you go in expecting you can change it later and you can't, that you know there may be additional charges to redesign your homepage. Yeah. So yeah. So in the in that situation, you just want to be clear of what that is. I mean, the other thing to mention is the. Um, above the fold, which mm -hmm. is what they call the sort of the bottom of the screen or, you know, what's going to be... What they see be, before scrolling. Yeah. So those first couple of um, 
positions, you probably want to think think long and hard about what those. But I mean, you'll also what you do is you look at you know really successful websites like what is Apple doing? How how is Apple presenting? And seeing because once you start to recognize those panels, you'll see it everywhere. And you know you can you can choose you know you can really pick best practice, best marketing practice just by looking at successful websites. All right, great. Thanks. Well, we're going to take a short break, and when we get back, we're actually going to go through all of the 20 different panels, and you're going to be able to select which ones are right for your business and start literally planning out uh, your website and what you need to have where. So keep watching. Welcome back to our interview. It's titled How to Plan Out Your Website in 45 Minutes. And uh, we're now going to go through the different panels that you may want to consider using on your website. So we're going to go through these and, and chat about uh, each of them as we kind of go through. And we'll kind of um, put in some little teaching points and explain how it works as we go through. But as we explain these panels, we really want people to be thinking about do I need this panel for my business? And if yeah. so, you might want to put a bit of a tick down or a cross if it's not relevant or just write down the ones that are relevant because we're going to go through all 20, but we want to let you know right now, you're not going to need all 20. You might need five, maybe seven, maybe a maximum of 10 different panels will be right for your business. So as we go through, the question you should be asking is, do I need it? And it's either yes or no. So you can actually get the right panels for your business. And then later on, we can do the ordering of the panels. That's not so important right now. Just decide whether you need it or not. All right, and it'll become clearer as we go. So let's get into it right now. The first one is your header. Now I'm guessing pretty much everyone needs a header, right? Yeah, it's pretty much essential. Uh, it's where all your navigation is. Uh, so it's it pretty much every website has one. Uh, you, if you're um, if you're a service-based industry, say you're a plumber or you're uh, you know a, an electrician or something, you want to make sure that you've got the phone number uh, up in the corner. So it's like if you're in a mobile, that phone number would be you just clickable. You click, clickable. You press a button and you can call. So it's like an immediate call to action. Or a restaurant if they want to make a booking. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Anywhere where you want someone to to phone you up or book in, you want to have that really relevant. Um, on, the, on, the, on this on this version, uh, you might. Uh, if to continue enjoying this presentation, download Brin, the world's first business advisor in your pocket. To find out more, visit Brin.ai or search the App Store today.